Hello, this is Doug from Homes Now, Not Later. Winter outreach is in full swing. Over the last few nights and weeks, it's been below freezing for some of that time and wet most of the time. Luckily, the cold in general over the last few weeks has been rain and snow free for the most part, but that could change at any minute. In order to not be caught off guard this year, we've implemented a few systems to help coordinate winter outreach. We have a number of Facebook chats as well as some Facebook groups that are posting information about outreach in, in, into and provides a way for people doing outreach to coordinate. This includes mentioning people who might be in trouble and where they are located at so we can get people out to help them. We don't rely on Facebook exclusively, but it is a very useful tool because many people are on it all the time for other reasons and they end up reading information that we put out there in general um, to as an outline to the situation on the ground so that people can respond accordingly and become more easily involved. Uh, linked in the description of this video, I have two a link for two Facebook groups, uh, or a Facebook group and a Facebook page uh, for homeless outreach. Uh, people that are directly involved in the outreach and out there doing it are in these groups. Um, we can also invite you uh, at request, we can invite you into the outreach chats as well on Facebook. We also have a system that we have developed independently called Homes Now Outreach Dashboard. This is a page on our website where you can find the status of emergency shelters and submit a report if you see somebody in trouble. Right now we are just linking to the official city and county pages related to the category of shelter availability, but in the future we will set it up to have real-time information and updates about which shelters are available and how many beds are available. This information would be fed into the system from people that are actually there or on the ground, right? Um, and as far as well as um, updates about how many beds are available, you know, where to check in, where to check out, you know, that kind of thing. Um, the purpose of the outreach report is that if you see somebody in the cold, you can fill out an outreach report and upload attachments as well, such as photos, if the location is in a weird spot uh, or some other um, useful files you want to upload if it's relevant, um, not required, of course. Um, these will be attached to the report and will get a direct message immediately. Uh, photos and information uploaded into our outreach dashboard will remain anonymous, except to those doing the outreach. The Homes Now Outreach Dashboard is accessible at homesnow.org slash outreach or outreach.homesnow.org. On this page, we will also have statistics such as how many outreach reports we've received in total, where they tend to happen on a map, and other useful information based on what happened to individuals who were approached with outreach and what problems they ran into overall. Using this information, we can begin to build a data set and become more efficient and strategic with our outreach to make sure that the maximum number of people within the homeless community survive the winter without death or injury, such as frostbite. Alternatively, if you send an email to outreach at homesnow.org, either mentioning somebody in need or offering donations, it will also get the message directly to us. This dashboard is currently one day's worth of web development work. I have been the one building it. I need ideas though. For, for those of you who have actually been out there doing the outreach more than me, um, if you could imagine an electronic system that helps with outreach, what would that look like? I have the very basic idea of submitting a report when somebody is in trouble, just one part of an overall system, but what other features would be useful to have on such a dashboard? Please leave comments if you have any ideas. We can probably implement them pretty quickly. Uh, I, sometimes I just um, don't know what to build. Like I can build it, but I don't know what to build because I don't do the outreach myself as, as much as, or actually I haven't done it at all. Um, but um, I want to help those who are doing the outreach to be more effective. And so uh, that's kind of why we're building the system. Um, let's see, this dashboard can be improved greatly and we can build it to be a lot better with your help, but we want it to be user friendly and easy to use. So if you have any suggestions, please share it and it can probably be implemented pretty quickly. Yeah, as I was saying. Um, another resident has moved in and 
Another resident will be moving in within a few days. We now have one tiny home that is open. Once we fill this last tiny home, we will be at full capacity with around 20 residents. We are ready to set up new locations to house more people as soon as the city, the county, the port, or any private landowner wants to let us use their land to help homeless individuals get off the streets in a cost-effective way to stabilize and move on to permanent housing. Unity Village costs around $1,200 a month to operate. There are vacant lots all throughout the city and around the county. We can make a serious dent in solving this problem at minimal cost. If only there were, was the political will to allow us to use the land for this purpose. Unity Village represents the best bang for buck sheltering option in Bellingham and Whatcom County. Not only is Unity Village and the tiny home model very cost effective, but it has, a, it has good results in, at providing a stable and secure place for people to get back on their feet and find permanent housing. Out of the 39 people who have gone through Winter Haven and Safe Haven and Unity Village, over 30% were able to find housing. Um, in the description of the video, you will f you will find a link to our data regarding um, rehousing rate and other you know statistics of people that have exited Unity Village. Um, we are also going to be making a second data set soon that includes just Unity Village as well. But we have not had enough residents yet leave yet in order to have an accurate data set of that yet. You know, two people or three people, so it's we, we need more before that data starts to look like it's gonna look. Um, if you are a private landowner, there might be tax benefits or a lease agreement we can come to for a mutually beneficial arrangement in which we can take people off the streets and leave improvements or benefits on your land. If you are the city and or the county or the port, there are a lot of ways in which you can help. One thing I've noticed throughout many city council meetings, county council meetings and committees is that the discussion around fi funding seems to be the primary agenda and comes up as a primary frame of mind in these discussions around homelessness. But one thing that's important to realize is that it's not just about money or funding. Yes, money is needed. Yes, funding is needed, including for homes now. But there are certain barriers of cost at certain levels. For example, the whole project of Unity Village is estimated to be around $100,000, give or take, to construct, and then $1,200 a month to operate. But when you take into account something like land cost, the land itself might cost multiple times what the actual structures and infrastructure on site would cost. Tiny homes can also be moved later if the situation changes. They don't have permanent foundations. There are so many vacant lots around town, if the landowner wants to do some good, Letting us set up a village on their vacant land is a very low risk option that helps alleviate the problem of homelessness in Bellingham and Whatcom County. Whether it's Homes Now or another group, this model that works to stabilize people while they look for permanent housing takes great strain off the existing emergency services and has better outcomes in general compared to taking no action at all, if implemented. Um, Petition to extend Unity Village. We need volunteers. As the city of Bellingham and the planning director, Rick Seppler, has stated, the permit to have Unity Village stay at the current location at 210 Mackenzie Avenue, Bellingham, Washington, 98225, will end April 30th, 2020. We have been told that there is no chance for an extension. The current land, however, is not going to be developed for at least three years when the Post Point wastewater treatment plant right next door is upgraded. The lot we are currently staying at sat vacant for years. We are going to do everything we can to try to get an extension on this site so we can move and expand Unity Village in a smooth way. That is why we've decided to try to gather signatures for a petition in favor of extending the stay of Unity Village at the current Fairhaven location as long as possible. We need anybody who's willing to volunteer to gather signatures for this petition. We can do it together or you can do it alone we don't usually go door to door, but we like to set up a table at various locations at certain times where it makes sense, where there might be a lot of people or foot traffic. If you are interested in gathering signatures for this petition, please print out a copy of our petition form, which is linked in the video here, and get signatures on it and get it back to us as soon as you can. Or if you want to sit down at a table with us and gather signatures as well, let us know. A new mayor and a new council comes in in January. 
and we want them to know that the Fairhaven neighborhood and the overall community like having us as neighbors and want Unity Village to continue until the land is needed by the city for something. The decision on whether to extend the permit or not, though, is an administrative decision. In other words, the mayor and the planning department, not the council. Any council members, though, speaking in support of Unity Village still helps, though. Yeah, and here's a link to the copy of the petition form. If we could get an extension, at least to, until the end of summer, it would be a lot easier for us to move Unity Village to another location in the right way while the weather is still good and buys us some more time to fundraise for private land or negotiate a lease with the county, port, or a private landowner. On the private land search, uh, we have found around seven sites that might be suitable for private land purchases. We don't necessarily need to raise enough money to buy the land outright. We could just raise enough for a good down payment. We will be scoping out these sites in the next week or two. We are also about to start a fundraiser specifically for raising money for private land. The fundraiser will be called Land Now, Not Later. It will be revealed within a week. If we get a site with the city or the county or, and our private land also comes through, we will set up a second site and keep expanding. Our short-term concept is the peace of my, or our, oh, yeah, oh, our short-term concern is the peace of mind of having a spot for Unity Village, either the current spot we're on with an extension or another spot for a more long-term stay. Knowing that we have a spot will bring peace of mind to the board and the residents of Unity Village because we will know that 20 people won't be sent back out onto the streets in April. Even the concern about it having even the concern of having it even be a possibility raises the anxiety level a few notches, but we'll figure it out and make it happen as we always do. Um, financial updates. Holmes now has implemented a new accounting system with the help of our professional accountant. We are now using the industry standard software QuickBooks Online for our accounting and members of the board, including the treasurer and myself have been getting trained on using it and inputting all financial data into the system properly. Previously, we promised that financial information would be released monthly and approved by a majority of the board. Switching to a new system took a little longer than we thought, which is why we were not able to release our first financial report last month. That situation has now been resolved though, and within the next few days, we will release our financial reports for October and November. From here on, it will be done monthly. Last but not least, I wanted to give a big thank you to all the volunteers and members of the community and the residents of Unity Village who have stood with Homes Now. Without you, Unity Village and the results we've been able to achieve as an organization would not have been possible. There's too many names to name. You know who you are. We love you. And thank you for the great work that you do, serving those in need. Enjoy the rest of your day. Live long and prosper.